can the cruise lines survive? Can they keep going? I was asked that just today by my neighbor who knows cruising is a big part of my life. As I explained to him what they're doing, I realized as his expression of amazement just grew and grew and grew, that what the cruise lines are doing to survive and to resume sailing is pretty jaw dropping. And frankly, it's rather extreme and it's also worth talking about. So here we go. Let me get the first thing out of the way quite quickly, which is, of course, they're saving huge amounts of money and they're raising massive amounts of money. And they've done three key things, the first of which they've scrapped so many ships. There's around about 34 ships have either been sold or scrapped to reduce the size of their fleets. The biggest one of those is by the Carnival Corporation. And you've seen Carnival itself, Holland America, P&O, Princess, Costa have all lost numbers of ships. They've had around 18 ships disappear altogether. But also Royal Caribbean has done it, Majesty of the Seas, Empress of the Seas, Independent Lines have ditched loads and loads of ships as well. Everything from Bahamas, Grand Celebration to Morella. And of course, we've also seen some cruise lines go under like Pullman Tour. So there has been a vast jettisoning of ships. The second thing they did, which is I've sort of alluded to already, is they've actually ditched entire lines. So Pullman Tour, Royal Caribbean let go, but they also sold Azamara to Sycamore Partners to basically have less to focus on. And then of course, they've raised loads and loads of cash with debt and issuing shares, and they put their ships into kind of a cold layup or a hot layup in order to save huge amounts of money. So they've taken some rather extreme measures to control costs and find ways of having money to keep them going. The second thing they've done is also pretty extreme. They've struggled to find places to sell from. So for example, the US, which has not really given any clear guidance. The US is really important. Half of all cruises in the world come out of the US and half of all cruise ships that sell come out of the US. So what have cruise lines done? Well, they've gone and hunted new home ports, basically looked for the path of least resistance where there are governments willing to partner with the cruise ships. And we've seen at least 14 brand new home ports for cruise ships emerging. There are seven new home ports in the Caribbean and the surrounding area. For example, you've got Antigua with Crystal Symphony, St. Martin with Celebrity Millennium, Jamaica's got Norwegian Joy, the Dominican Republic has Norwegian Gem. In Barbados, you've got Seabourn Odyssey, and in the Bahamas, you've got Crystal Serenity and Royal Caribbean Adventures of the Sea. In Bermuda, you've got Viking Orion. But we've also got the Canary Islands has become a home port mostly focused on the German lines with Mindschiff, Aida and Hapag Lloyd. Greece is going to have Celebrity Apex, Norwegian Jade, Seabourn Ovation and Silver Sea Moon. In Cyprus has become a home port with Aida and the Royal Caribbean Jewel of the Seas. Even Israel is now a home port with Odyssey of the Seas. Iceland has Crystal Endeavour and Viking Sky now home porting there. So this is pretty extreme. Instead of using the cruising capitals of the world like Miami, Port Canaveral, or even many of the big ones in Europe which are closed like Barcelona, the cruise ships and the cruise lines have found brand new home ports with all the complexity of setting that up entails and all of the logistics. The next bizarre and unusual move is they now sail to nowhere to start cruising. So it started in Singapore initially where they did cruises to nowhere. This is also happening in the United Kingdom where we have 13 lines at least selling kind of cruises to nowhere, which includes Celebrity, Cunard, Disney, Fred Olsen, Hurti Gruten, Morella, MSC Cruises, p Cruises, Princess Cruises, Royal Caribbean Saga, Viking, and even Virgin Voyages. Cruise lines have had to not only find home ports, but have also now turned to taking passengers nowhere as a way of starting sailing, as a way of keeping afloat. Cruise lines also used to pride themselves on having multiple nationalities and creating a whole environment with loads of people from all around the world mixing. But now they're limiting who can sail. Already they start with lower capacity, 50-60%. They're also limiting many of these cruises to residents of only certain places. So for example, Israelis on the Israel cruise, UK residents on UK, Singapore on Singapore, even MSC and Costa when they were sailing, it was only Italians initially and then went to the EU. Also they have required vaccines, for example, on many of these cruises. So cutting off a big chunk of their market in many cases because families couldn't travel on some of these cruises. So actually restricting not only the nationality, but the type of people and the numbers of people who can go on their cruises, which is a pretty extreme thing to do as well. The cruise lines have also completely changed the way they approach to letting people board. They are now performing 
medical tests and screening. So before you go on a cruise, you will have to have some kind of test. So some of them are done even before coming to the port, certainly before boarding is the case. And often you're tested before you get off a cruise because that's a requirement in certain countries like it was in Italy, for example, or a lot of the cruises in the Caribbean having to do that because passengers have to have a PCR test or a COVID test before they can head back into the United States. So medical screening, medical testing, and testing on board the ships and lab capacity is another big change that's happened and cruise lines are having to do, unlike many, many other forms of transport, whether that be tour buses, trains, or aeroplanes, do not have that same change that they've made. The other astounding thing that cruise lines are doing is creating bubbles on board their ship, which is also pretty different to other ways that you travel. The idea being that you create this environment where you protect everybody and you stay within the bubble. So for example, on many cruises, as cruise lines start sailing again, is you can't self-explore in the port. You have to go on a cruise line only excursion. And of course, exploring ports by yourself is a big attraction. So actually one of the big things that are appealing to their travelers, the people who go on cruises, they're taking away as a way of starting sailing again. Of course, over time, the expectation is this will drop. And in some of the cruises, it's not entirely required based on the requirements of the countries. But it's a pretty extreme and pretty astounding change is saying you can't go out and explore. You have to stay within our bubble on a cruise line only excursion. Not only are they stopping people doing what they may want to do in port, they're also stopping people doing what they want to do on board the ship. So this is pretty astounding when you're bringing people on a vacation and you're having to restrict what they do. Again, this is of course for safety and health reasons. But a couple of things that you're finding is, for example, mask wearing is still part of the protocols, which again, over time, they're hoping will drop, particularly as they have more vaccinated passengers on board. But you do have to follow social distancing rules. So in many of the cruises, you have to book to go to the theater, or you have to book at certain times to go for dinner. And in some places, you have to book a spot around the swimming pool at certain times. You also can't dine with other people that are not within your household bubble or linked bookings. You also can't do things like self-serve at a buffet. It's all served by the crew. So kind of limiting what people are doing. And that's a pretty astounding thing again, because many of those things are the reason that people go on cruises. Talking about and explaining the sort of things that cruise lines are doing to stay afloat, to keep going and to find ways of sailing is pretty jaw-dropping and is pretty extreme and is pretty astounding. What do you think? Love to know. If you want to know more about the sort of protocols and things that are happening on cruise ships as they resume, I've put this playlist together with two videos that I think you will find really helpful. So take a look at those right now.